Good morning, folks, and welcome to our service here at Bearsden Baptist Church this morning. It's great to have you with us, gathering uh, online through YouTube or gathering on Zoom to watch the service together. This morning's service has quite a lot within it. It's quite an exciting service that we have. John Crabe is going to be speaking to us, continuing in this series that we've been doing, looking at different aspects of the cross and what the cross means to us and different uh, things that happen as a result of the cross today, looking at the idea that Jesus was wounded so that we can be healed. And we've got a really exciting bit of testimony, a video from Jimmy Thompson, uh, sharing a bit of a story about his experiences of healing. Also, we are going to be hearing from June Grindley, who has a picture to share with us, and is also going to be doing uh, praying for different ministries within the church and different ministries within our own lives and, and generally praying into various different situations. And we also have a little um, advert from Hannah Crabe, who is running the Glencoe Marathon um, in the near future, um, which is, yeah, quite incredible. Um, I remember I did uh, the Edinburgh Marathon about 15 years ago now, a long time ago, um, and that was quite enough for me, the idea of doing it up in Glencoe and all the, the kind of climbing up and down hills that's involved in that. Um, yeah, fair play to Hannah and she deserves lots of support. So hopefully um, she can raise a great amount of money through that for, for Bethany Trust. So we'll be hearing from Hannah for a little update on that as well. But first of all, to begin our service, let's start our time together with a time of worship. So let's sing and praise God together. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Worship His holy name Sing like never before Oh my soul I'll worship Your holy name It's time to sing your song again Whatever may pass and whatever lies before me Let me be singing when the evening comes Bless the Lord, oh my soul Worship His holy name Sing like never before Oh my soul I worship Your holy name Never before 
draws near and my time has come Still my soul will sing your praise unending Ten thousand years and then Lie, you won't tear down 
coming after me There's no shadow you won't light up Mountain you won't climb up Coming after me There's no wall you won't kick down Fly you won't tear down Coming after me There's no shadow you won't light up Mountain you won't climb up Coming after me On the 5th of September I'm going to be running the Glencoe Marathon which involves over 1,300 metres of ascent which is why I'm in the hills, you can see. <laughs> I am, um, it's pretty long and I'm doing it for Bethany Christian Trust which is a charity which aims to relieve and end uh, homelessness in Scotland. Uh, they work all over the country and um, it's an incredible cause so if you'd like to support please give to my Just Giving page. Thank you so much. Hi everyone, I'm June Grindley and John's asked me to share a picture with you that I've had over the past two or three weeks. I'm hoping it'll come up on the screen, um, but just in case there are technical issues, this is it here. It's a picture of a butterfly coming out of a chrysalis and there's actually a bit more purple in it than you can see there. Um, and that's quite significant because purple means authority. Um, in the spiritual realms. And what I felt God was saying was that this picture represents an emerging authority within the church. And it's a church worldwide, community-based, and also in us as individuals in the church. And really what it reminded me of was um, parts of the Bible in Matthew 28, where Jesus says, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. So he is really passing his authority on to us for doing what we know of as the Great Commission. And also in Luke, in chapter 10, Behold, I have given you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall hurt you. So really, authority within our ministry to come against the devil and to break off the effects that he has on our lives and, and the lives of the people that we come into contact with. And also, I was thinking of um, Luke chapter 9 and also Matthew 10, where Jesus called the twelve together. 12 disciples together and gave them power and authority over all demons and to cure diseases. So again, giving us power to come against the things that the devil does and the things that he uh, uses to bring suffering and um, just all, all his work within society and the world that um, brings hurt to others. And so we have that authority, but within our own unique callings, we also have authority as well. And I felt that um, God was encouraging us to step into the authority that he gives us within our own callings and ministries. So for me, um, 
I have a couple of callings. Uh, one is in the field of autism and another is to be prophetic. And when I began moving forward in both of these, um, I really struggled with the idea of having the authority in those areas. I didn't really feel that I was experienced or expert enough. And yet God was calling me and telling me that I did have that authority. But I stepped out in obedience and in faith that he had called me into these areas. And as I have done so, I've seen God working in miraculous ways, really. And I know that I have that authority much more now as I've seen the giftings and the ministry grow and develop over the years. And so for individuals, for us as individuals, I really felt that God was inviting us to put on the mantle of authority that he is giving us. And over the past um, couple of years, as we faced COVID and the pandemic, certainly for me personally, there's been um, a development going on. And I've seen the way God is using me in both of these areas and my confidence has increased and I feel like I'm choosing to take on more of that mantle of authority and I'm seeing it emerging more in my life and in my ministries and what he has called me to. So let's now turn to our prayers of intercession which this week are for the ministries of the church and our own ministries. Let's pray. Father God, I give you thanks and praise for all that you give us when you call us to do different things. I thank you for the equipping that you give us and for the authority that you give us and the tools that you give us and your Holy Spirit and everything else that you give us to do the jobs and ministries that you have called us to. Father, some of these jobs are practical and those are just as important as some of the things that we see as being more spiritual. Lord, I want to thank you that you are with us and I thank you for the ministries of the church and what you have called us to and the different roles that we have within these ministries. And Lord, I pray, I pray now for the gardens group and different ministries associated with that for slow down, breathe and refresh, for the Antonine Wall Project, for the quiet gardens meditations, for the gardens group itself and all that they bring us to enable the gardens to look so good. Father, I pray for Beersden Barista and all the associated ministries with that, particularly the new and emerging mental health ministry that's going on there. I pray for bumps and bundles and the ways in which the your word has gone out through that for many years and the different lives of people that have been touched there. Lord, I think of lunch break and the ministry to care homes. For the ministries through small groups. And through Kids Zone. And all that Mary is doing through the other children's work and families work. Lord, I pray for the youth work that's going on in John Burns. Lord, you think of all that has happened and all that's continuing to happen. Lord, you think of Crossroads possibly starting up again. 2.42 and the Monday night SU that's gone on. We think of the Friday night drop-ins and the school's work which can't happen at the moment. Father, we also think of the prison work. And for associated ministries to the church, 
like street pastors and creative eaters. And Father, for each one of these that's been listed, I pray for the people involved. I pray that you would grant each one of us the authority to take on the roles that you have given us and that you call us to within each of these ministries. I pray that you would help us to be in the right places at the right time, doing the right things. That where you need to move people around, we would be open to that. Father, I pray that you would help us to hear your voice, to have your wisdom and insight and to be guided by your Holy Spirit to move the ministries forward as you would want them to move forward. Lord, help us to let go of those things which you want us to let go of and to take on the new things in the new ways that you want us to take on. Father, there's been such an emergence of the need for um, help with mental health. And we pray particularly for that new ministry that is coming into being alongside Bearsden Barista. We pray for each of the volunteers who are getting involved, that you would be with them and grant them help as they speak to people, listen to people to know how to support people. We pray for the infrastructure and logistics as well for all of that, Father. That there would be quiet places, quiet places where people can offload and where your words can be spoken into lives to bring healing. Lord, we pray for the older folk that we normally reach out to as a church. We think of lunch break starting up again. We ask that you would be with each person who's involved with that, that you'd help them to see the way forward that is safe for the elderly. Lord, we pray particularly for the prayer ministry. And we pray that you would be with each person who is on that team, that they would see you at work, through what they are doing. Father, I just declare that they would see healings, even in this week, as they pray for people in your name. Lord, we pray for all of the youth work and kids work and families work. We pray that you would be with each worker, that you would keep them well, that you would give them, give them the strength that they need and the wisdom and understanding that they need to work with the children and the young people and the families to know what to say and when to say it and how to help them to know that you're a good God, a loving God and a God who likes fun. Yeah, and Father, we pray for the prison work that John does and, and some of the others and we pray that you would be with them and help them too, particularly after the pandemic. We pray that they would have the right words to say to each uh, inmate. We pray that you would be seen in and through them and that your light would be there in the dark places in people's lives. And so, Father, we give you thanks and praise that you do promise to give us everything that we need as we step out for you. And we pray and declare that you will do that and we will see it this week. And we ask that you'd help us to take on that mantle of authority in the different areas that you have given us to work and that you are calling us to in your ministry. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen.
There's a grace when the heart is under fire Another way when the walls are closing And when I look at the space between Where I used to be and this reckoning I know I will never be alone There was another in the fire Standing next to me There was another in the waters Holding back the seas And should I ever need reminding Of how I've been set free There's a cross that bears the burden Another died for me. There is another in the fire. All my dead left for dead beneath the waters. I'm no longer a slave to my sin. Should I fall in the space between what remains of me and this reckoning? Either way, I will bow to the things of this world. And I know I will never be alone. There is another in the fire standing next to me. There is another in the wall. If I ever need reminding What power set me free There is a grave that holds to my body And now that power lasts in me There is another in the fire Oh, there is another in the fire What may in the space between all the things unseen and this reckoning? I know I will never be alone. I know I will never be alone. Be another in the fire. Should I ever need reminding How good you've been to me I count the joy from every battle Cause I know that's where you'll be I can see the light in the darkness As the darkness bows to him I can hear the roar in the heavens As the space between where's thin Prison walls gave in Nothing stands between us Nothing stands between us 
Well, Jimmy, it's good to see you. Nice to be here. Yeah. Nice to see you too, John. Yeah, tell us a little bit about this uh, story of yours. What, what happened two and a half years ago to cause kind of concerns about your health? Well, I was out playing golf, or should I say, trying to play golf, <laughs> you see. So what happened next? I said, so we were walking up yeah. together, and we just got to my ball, and all of a sudden, I just said, Jack, I'm going to go. I said, the next thing I was down by my back. I said, I never lost consciousness. No. I said, but the strange thing was, I couldn't see Andy. So I presume at this point you were whisked into hospital, were you? Yes. Uh -huh. They took me into the Western. Mm -hmm. I said, well, the time I got to the Western, I'd come round and I felt not bad at all. Mm -hmm. See? And I thought, oh, with a, what am I doing out here? I said, I'm okay. <laughs> so they presumably did a few tests, did they? Yeah, and another doctor came up to me and said, I want to send you for a chest X-ray. Right. I said, so I had an X-ray, mm -hmm. and then I was transferred from the Western to the respiratory clinic in Garton Abel. Yeah, so what were the results? What did all this show? Well, I found out I had a, a large ball, a large cancerous tumour. Mm -hmm. You see? In the top of my right lung. Yeah. See? So from the from Garden Naval I was taken to a clinic where they took a biopsy mm -hmm. to see if it was malignant or not, not malignant. I said, well it was malignant. I was on six weeks of radiotherapy. So did that have a positive effect or not, Jimmy? Well it, <laughs> You don't know what really happening yeah. because uh, there was no pain. I, I, I felt tired. I got tired easily. Mm -hmm. I said a wee bit nausea, not a great mm -hmm. deal, but I had no desire to eat a lot. Yeah. You see. Well, you got very thin, I think, didn't you? And uh, yes, I lost two and a half stone eventually. Yeah, and I know your wife Betty was worried about you, and certainly we were worried about you. Yes. In the church. See, but I was conscious of. Prayers on my behalf, mm. you see, and I was in God's hands. Yeah. So but what was the big thing that changed? What happened? Uh, well, day? my pastor John, Judy Anderson, and Rachel Tange, two of the deaconess, lady deaconesses, mm -hmm. were invited up to the house. They came, and we had a communion service. Right. They prayed for me and laid hands on me. Mm -hmm. I said, now. Something remarkable happened to me that day. Yeah. I said, now, John and Judy laid hands on my head as they were praying. Mm -hmm. I said, now, Rachel Tange was sitting half kneeling on the carpet where I was sitting. Mm -hmm. And she placed her hand just right in my chest there. I said, now, something incredibly happened. It got hot, red hot. Mm -hmm. Not just over my body, but just her, where her hand was, was red hot. Yeah. I said, I believe something had happened to me. Mm -hmm. I said, I had no evidence. I so no when, when did it become clear that something well, it had happened? Six or seven weeks afterwards, I said, unfortunately, Margaret Wyburn, a member in the church here, was with me. Mm -hmm. And when we seen the doctor, and the doctor was quite pleased with the results of my x-ray and everything else. She said, well, we've looked at your CT scan, your CR scan, we've looked at everything today, and there's not a thing there. Wow. <laughs> there's nothing at all. So it was a medical. She said, all you've got just now, you've still got a cancerous tumour in your lung, mm -hmm. but it's the size of a green pea. So were they surprised, the doctors? Well, I think they were delighted with the result. <laughs> I'm sure they were. You see? I said, I was overjoyed yeah. to hear that. Did you notice a difference in your health thereafter? Yes. I would say now I'm a wee bit more breathless than I was at the time. Mm -hmm. You see? Now, whether that's because of, the, of a lot of fluid which is solidified in the bottom of my lung and they can't, yeah. they took some out but they couldn't do any, take any more. Yeah. I said, so I gather that's probably why I get breathless if I rush. Mm -hmm. 
I said, so I do everything at a snail's place, pace now, <laughs> and I'm coping not bad. Yeah, and you did get back to driving and playing golf a bit for a while. Yes. As a matter of fact, I was in the golf range three weeks ago with my grandson. Fantastic. I said, now, once his studies is finished, finished on the 23rd of April, I can play Bishop Bright's course, mm -hmm. I can play the Cannon Castle, I can play Ross Priory because I can hire a buggy. And what's the doctor saying now? I think, uh, was it your son Gordon spoke to the doctor not so long ago? What was the doctor saying at that point? Well, he says I'm a miracle. Yeah, and your hope is, I think, to you want to be at uh, Jamie's graduation. Yes. Which is, uh, what, a year in the summer, probably? Yes, because well, that's just the first thing I asked the Lord for. I said, <laughs> keep me going till see my grandson graduation. Yeah. yeah I said, because that would be a first for the Thompson family. That would be fantastic. So, yeah. so there you are. Well, thank you so much, Jimmy. What a uh, trouble. You've clearly uh, met with Jesus in the miraculous. Yes, I would say so, John. Yeah, and God has been glorified. Yes, it has. Yeah. God's good. Yeah. Amen. Amen. <laughs> The exchange we're looking at today is this. Jesus was wounded so that we might be healed. And I'm going back to begin with to Isaiah 53, which is a, a core passage for a lot of the exchanges that we're looking at. In particular, verses 4 and 5. Surely the Lord's servant took up our pain and bore our suffering. Yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him and afflicted, but he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him. And by his wounds, we are healed. On the cross, this reminds us, Jesus endured terrible pain and suffering and experienced dreadful wounds. The emphasis in these two verses is that Jesus' physical wounding made possible our physical healing. And physical healing is something we pray for often, but so seldom see in 21st century Scotland, at least in dramatic ways. When we do see it, it thrills and excites us. The most dramatic example I have seen was Jimmy Thompson's healing from cancer late in 2013 and we've seen his testimony of that healing and Jimmy lived for another five years to his late 80s he saw his grandson Jamie graduate which was his great hope and we long to see more miracles like that one we could ask the question if we're sick how do I know that it's God's will to heal me. But perhaps the question we should be asking is this, how can I receive the healing that God has already provided through Jesus on the cross? Maybe people might argue, well, I, Isaiah 53 is in the Old Testament and we should be looking more to the New Testament to see what it says. The only problem with that argument is that Isaiah 53 is quoted by New Testament writings in this context. One example is in Matthew 8 verses 16 to 17. When evening came, many who were demon-possessed were brought to Jesus, and he drove out the spirits with a word and healed all the sick. This was to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet Isaiah. He took up our infirmities and bore 
our diseases. And again in 1 Peter 2.24, he himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness. By his wounds, you have been healed. And it seems clear in these verses that the focus of these healings is not so much on the person who's being healed, but on Jesus, the healer. So as we seek healing for ourselves or for others, we shouldn't focus on that person or on ourselves, but rather on Jesus and his work on the cross. That should be the focal point for our prayers. In the New Testament, there are three different Greek words translated healing in different places. The most common is the word therapeuo, from which we get in English words like therapeutic or therapy. And it's used 43 times, with the emphasis uh, being mostly, although not exclusively, on natural healing. The second word is yaomai, which is used 26 times, uh, with the emphasis for that word being on supernatural healing. The third word, which may be more familiar to you, is the word sozo which appears in the New Testament 106 times, but mostly translated salvation. However, 14 times the word is translated healed or cured or made well, and on one occasion delivered. And so it seems like salvation with this word sozo is a holistic work that covers the whole person, physical and spiritual. And the reason for choosing the passage in Luke 8 is because all three words appear in this passage. We have the story of the demon-possessed man being delivered from a demon. So in verses 35 and 36, it says they found the man from whom the demons had gone out sitting at Jesus' feet, dressed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. Those who had seen it told the people how the demon-possessed man had been cured. And the Greek word there, translated cured, is the word sozo. And then comes the story of Jairus' daughter. Jairus is a synagogue leader, and he's seeking healing for his daughter who is unwell. While he's explaining the situation to Jesus, an update is delivered, which tells him that she has died. But at this worst news, Jesus says to her father in verse 50, don't be afraid, just believe, and she will be healed. And again, the word is sozo. And then Jesus meets the girl and resurrects her from the dead. And so it seems that sozo can be used for deliverance and also for resurrection. In the midst of this resurrection story comes a woman who had suffered bleeding for 12 years. And this is a condition which would have made her permanently, ceremonially unclean, and so excluded her from the temple courts and the ability to worship God fully. Uh, Theoretically, this could have made Jesus himself unclean if they touch. Hence her plan just to touch his garment surreptitiously. Uniquely, this account, just a few verses, includes all three of the Greek words for healing. In verse 43, we're told, a woman was there who'd been subject to bleeding for 12 years. 
but no one could heal her. The Greek this time is the word therapeuo, or natural healing. Clearly, she'd gone to many doctors over the years, maybe spent a lot of money, but without success. Uh, medical help back then was a lot less sophisticated uh, than it is today. And then in verse, verse 47, we read, Then the woman, seeing that she could not go unnoticed, came trembling and fell at Jesus' feet. In the presence of all the people, she told why she had touched him and how she had been instantly healed. This time, the Greek word, yaumai, supernaturally healed. Twelve years of first century medical intervention and nothing had changed. But one touch of the king changed everything. And then in verse 48, Jesus said to her, Daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace. This third time, the word is sozo, completely healed. Such exciting stories with remarkable outcomes. And all because Jesus was wounded so that we might be healed. Now, of course, we know that this is not always, nor indeed often, reflected in our experiences in the 21st century. Some of you will remember Ted Herbert, husband of Diana, vice principal of the International Christian College, uh, and deacon in our own church. And Ted was diagnosed with an aggressive cancer in August 2008. His testimony from that time is still on YouTube. Ted believed in healing, and we prayed for that, along with hundreds, if not thousands, of other people. And he said in his testimony that even if God didn't heal him, he'd had a great life. And if I die, he says, I, I will go to be with Christ, which is not such a bad deal. So it's a win-win. Either way, I win. And so he concluded with the words, death, where is your sting? Ted died five weeks after his diagnosis and five days after that testimony. Ted was trusting in the cross for healing. And while it didn't come then, it will come at the resurrection. And all because Ted trusted in the cross. And what Ch Ted shared that evening reminded me of the three young ma men who faced the fiery, a fiery fate in Daniel 3 because they wouldn't worship the king's idol. They believed that God would save them, but they said to the king, if we're thrown into the blazing furnace, the God who we serve is able to deliver us from it. And he will deliver us from your majesty's hand. But even if he does not, we want you to know, your majesty, that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold you have set up. And I think Ted was essentially saying something quite similar. I believe God can heal me. But even if he does not, I will continue to trust him and have peace whatever the outcome. So death, put that in your pipe and smoke it. We can trust fully in the, in the exchange that Jesus was wounded so that we might be healed. The only question is when and how? Now or in eternity. But I, was, I will always pray for someone to be healed and believe fully that it can happen today. I saw it with Jimmy. 
And I want to see more miracles like that because they raise our faith in a supernatural God. Uh, June Grindley shared earlier her picture about increasing authority. And I wondered if maybe that was part of the problem was our lack of authority. If you look in the scriptures, uh, you read that the disciples uh, needed Jesus' authority. They needed his authority when they went out on their own to heal people and to deliver people. And he gave them his authority once more in Matthew 28 in the Great Commission, uh, authority to make disciples, authority to baptize, authority to teach. And so I suspect, well, I know we need that same authority that the disciples received from the Lord. And in a moment, on the back of June's uh, vision, I'm going to pray that that authority would return to the church in these days. But even when God has another plan, I'll give thanks for that too, just as Ted did. Knowing that God is sovereign and that everything he does is to his glory and that one day he will wipe every tear from our eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain for the old order of things will have passed away because Jesus was wounded so that we might be healed. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this exciting exchange. And maybe it is that some people imagine that this healing only ultimately comes in eternity, and it certainly does then uh, in the resurrection. But our heart is to see this happen today, just as in the example of Jimmy, and perhaps each of us has our own example of supernatural healing to tell. But we want to see this more, not just for our own benefit, to be healed from our sicknesses and infirmities, but because of the faith that it raises in us and also the impact that these uh, occurrences have on those who don't yet believe. It can be a factor in drawing somebody to faith. And so we would long to see this happening more often in our own time and generation and in our own nation of Scotland, because we do hear these things happening in other places where it appears they have either more faith or a greater degree of authority. And Lord, we claim that authority today, the authority of Jesus that he gave to his disciples in those early days. We want to recover that authority in our day, the authority to cast out demons, the authority to heal diseases, the authority to make disciples, the authority to baptize, and the authority to teach. Lord, uh, we open our hands to receive that authority, that authority of Jesus from you. Trust us enough, Lord, and give us the faith that we need to handle that level of authority in our lives and ministry and mission today. And we pray all of that in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's uh, close our time now by spending a further time in praise. I see the stars, 
I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe display. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Far as glades I wander And hear the birds Sing sweetly in the trees When I look down From lofty mountain grandeur And see the blue And feel the gentle And sings my soul, my Savior God, to me. How great Thou art! Oh, how great Thou art! And sings my soul, my Savior God, to me. How great Thou art! God, His Son, not sparing, sent Him to die, I scarce can take it in. That on the cross, my burden gladly bearing, He bled and died to take away. Sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art! How great thou art! Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art! How great thou
Well, thank you so much for joining with us for a time of worship and gathering together around God's Word this morning. Thanks to John and to everyone else who's been involved in creating the different aspects of our service. Really appreciate all the work that goes into that and it's continued over these past 18 months through this kind of challenging time. So it's, it's been a lot of work that's gone into that and we really do appreciate all, all that's been put in. This coming week we have our Bumps and Bundles um, barista is on Monday morning. We have the normal regular barista cafe on Wednesday and Thursday. And so we hope to see you at some of those things during the week. And if not, we will see you next Sunday morning. We're back here as normal next Sunday morning. And this evening, one final thing to tell you is that this evening is our last in our summer sessions. Uh, where we've been looking at Ezra and Nehemiah and the story of the return from exile and seeing what God would say to us as we return to gathering for worship together post pandemic. And this evening, it's myself and Ron Rye from Kirkcaldy who are leading that service together. And we're going to be kind of co-preaching on that one, uh, looking at the final ideas in the final section that we're going to look at through Ezra and Nehemiah. And so I really would encourage you, if you're able to come along to that, you don't need to book, you can just turn up 7pm this evening for that, for our final summer session. But we hope to see you somewhere either this evening or during the week or next Sunday morning. God bless and take care. Bye for now.